Hey! Hi, how you doing? This is Ryan, and welcome back to the Gamertron Show. It's been over two years, coming up close to three whole years now, since the video game Battleborn shut down its servers and became completely unplayable. And you know what? I'm still not over it. The game just sits in my Steam library now, taunting me. That big blue install button, space required, 40 free gigabytes. It's downright insulting, because there's a genuine video game right there. What, you think those 40 free gigabytes are hot air? No, no, Battleborn still exists. All of its code, its assets, its content, its features, its mechanics, it's all still right there. The game could, theoretically, still be played to this very day, but alas, Gearbox and or 2K, whoever made the decision, built the game on the foundation of and tied it to dedicated servers. You know, I'm well aware that peer-to-peer -peer server networking architecture has its issues, absolutely, but in instances like this, it's why I will always prefer peer-to-peer -peer over dedicated. I will take some lag over losing access to the entirety of the fucking game when the servers eventually have to be shut down. I mean, you have to pay for those servers after all, and if your game isn't profitable and or popular enough, well, it doesn't really make much sense from a business and financial standpoint to keep paying for those servers, now does it? However, nonetheless, that still doesn't excuse the absolutely absurd, ridiculous decision to completely shackle the entirety of the game to dedicated servers, especially when it came to the PvE content, namely, the story campaign. Now, you could make a semi-fair argument about tying the PvP multiplayer solely to dedicated servers. Okay. Fine, fair enough. But what logical, rational reason was there to build the story campaign and all of its levels, including the DLC PvE missions, on top of dedicated servers? Battleborn wasn't an MMO. There was no justifiable reason for the entirety of the game to require an internet connection in order for you to access all of the content in the game. Let's look at the Call of Duty franchise. Every Call of Duty game, even the bad ones, let you play their story campaigns and play their zombies PvE mode without requiring a connection to the internet. And to top it all off, if you look at the history of Gearbox as a video game developer and a publisher, all the games they've made and published, they can all be played and experienced in offline single player, no internet connection required. So why in the hell was Battleborn developed to be the black sheep of the family? To any video game developers who may stumble across this video, please, for the love of God, if you are developing a video game with PvE content, don't design that PvE content to always require an internet connection in order to function. Look, there are some games and some developers that can get away with it and do it properly. Digital Extremes with Warframe, Bungie with Destiny. They're free-to-play live service games. An always online, internet-required design makes sense in those cases. Do I wish those games had some offline functionalities? Oh, absolutely. Do I hope and pray that the developers of those games have intentions to preserve the content and their games, even when they become no longer profitable or popular? Hell yeah, I do. I fucking love Warframe and Destiny. Warframe is one of my favorite video games of all time. It would break my goddamn heart if that game just disappeared and ceased to exist. But for the time being, for the types of games that they are, I understand the need for them to be always online and require an internet connection. But Battleborn? Battleborn's story campaign? And its additional DLC missions? Hell nah! How did that PvE content, requiring a constant connection to the internet, benefit the experience and benefit the product as a whole? Well, quite obviously, it didn't. And it's just so frustrating, because it's such a damn shame. Battleborn was such a unique game. There was truly nothing else like it. It was something special. The way Battleborn's gameplay merged the designs of first-person shooters and MOBAs? There's never been anything else like it. Since Battleborn, no other developers have even taken a crack at their own spin on a first-person shooter MOBA. Meanwhile, Overwatch inspired countless copycats and clones trying to cash in with their own take on the hero shooter. Now, don't misunderstand me. 
I like this whole hero shooter class design that's become pretty mainstream throughout all of gaming. Recently I've been playing and greatly enjoying Exoprimal, which I would argue has stupendous hero character class design. Hell, just the design of the game overall is so unique and creative, such a different spin on a PvPvE style of game that we've never seen before. It kind of reminds me of... Battleborn. Oh, and Exoprimal is also a game that's built on dedicated servers and requires an always online internet connection. Oh no. I think you're all starting to get an idea of what inspired this video here. Here's Exoprimal, a new IP, a unique and creative PvE and PvP experience that if actions are not taken soon to redesign the game's structural foundation and decouple it from acquiring dedicated servers and an always online internet connection, Exoprimal will meet the same fate as Battleborn. And god damn it, I don't want to see this happen again. I don't want to see yet another cool, creative, original IP become completely inaccessible and unplayable because of this bizarre obsession with dedicated servers. The gaming community to this day still gives the video game Evolve, which released in 2015, so much shit for being a dead multiplayer game, for being unplayable, yet still, to this day, to this year, 2023, I can boot up Evolve and play single player offline against bots. All of these other always online video games are dropping like flies and becoming unplayable, and yet Evolve, still standing, still playable to this very day, because it has offline single player. You don't need an internet connection to play Evolve. As long as you bought and owned the game in 2015, you can still install it and play it offline single player right now. Can't really say the same about Battleborn, or more recently, Babylon's Fall. Will we be able to say the same about Exoprimal in one year, two years time? Granted, I have more faith in Capcom than I do Publisher 2K, who was the publisher of Battleborn. Maybe 2K forced Gearbox to make Battleborn always online. I don't know. Perhaps the fact that the rest of Gearbox's catalog consists of video games that can always be played in offline single player says something. And Publisher 2K is no stranger to nonsensical anti-consumer decisions. But when it comes to Capcom, over the past several years, they've established a mostly pro-consumer track record, especially when it comes to their recent Monster Hunter and Resident Evil titles. So I'd like to believe and have a bit of faith that they can course correct with Exoprimal. However, we still nonetheless need to make sure our voices are heard. We want video game preservation. These stories, these characters, these worlds, these experiences, they're worth preserving. Creatives, artists, poured their heart and souls into bringing these things to life. Their time and their efforts should be honored, damn it. What happened to Battleborn was a travesty, and my heart breaks for the community, the small but dedicated community of people who loved Battleborn. Look, I loved it too. I miss the game too. I wish 2K and Gearbox would stop being assholes and release those 43 gigabytes of game that are just sitting around there doing nothing, and just release it to the community so that they could do something with it and preserve the game on their own accord. But alas, that is not the state of things. At the very least, however, we can honor Battleborn's memory together by trying our very best to make sure that what happened to Battleborn never happens to another video game ever again. Demand that your video games be made to be playable forever. Demand that your video games always be designed with preservation in mind. Demand this for all video games, not just the ones you personally like and play. Demand this for even the ones you don't like. Our media, our history, our culture should be preserved. It all has value. Battleborn had value. No goddammit, Battleborn still has value. Exoprimal has value. Even goddamn Babylon's Fall had value. No, seriously, really, have you ever listened to the soundtrack of Babylon's Fall? It's genuinely stupendous.
anyways, yeah, I'm still not over Battleborn, and I really hope what happened to Battleborn doesn't happen to Exoprimal. And that's why I'm making this video. Gotta make our voices heard somehow, eh? Anyways, that's been a video. Thank you for watching. If you did indeed like the video in any way, shape, or form, please be sure to hit the like button. Leave a comment in the comment section down below. If you want to help out and support this video, then please share it on social media. Twitter, Reddit, Facebook, and maybe some Discord servers. And if you want to help out and support me directly, please consider making a donation via the Super Thanks feature here on YouTube, or by clicking on the links and donating to my Buy Me A Coffee or Ko-Fi pages, links in the description down below. Anyways, once again, that's been a video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all later.